I love that StreamYard just jumps right in. Hola, Feldstone Nick. Um, yeah, totally impromptu, uh, off the cuff live stream. I didn't really have any plans. Uh, I don't even know if, like, I think my mic is sending out audio well enough. I, I wasn't really planning on jumping in to do a live stream this morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, tech fans of all shapes and sorts and sizes and persuasions. Welcome to, <laughs> as I smash my desk, welcome to a completely off the cuff live stream where I have a new phone and I don't really spend enough time like unboxing new phones. So we're going to do that this morning. Cameron Burrell, Wesley, Aditya Anil, Guten Tag. Happy Friday. I hope you've been all, I hope you all have been having a fantastic week. Um, and uh, I, 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 I've been putting out way too much content. I'm going to have a headphone review going out today. I've got a phone review going out tomorrow. Another phone just showed up on my desk. I've got camera reviews out the wazoo. I just want to hang out. I want to have a, a fun chat with all of y'all. Uh, Brian S., I've been waiting for this one. Yes, I have two. Impromptu Juan. Juan impromptu live stream. Um, Wesley, show us the goods. Hey, LFA reviews. Everyone, if you love your ears, you should be following LFA. Um, uh, value for money earphone. Name one. I'm going to leave that up to LFA. You should ask LFA, uh, Amir, what some good earphone values would be. Um, since launched, waiting for your unboxing. <laughs> uh, Meyer saying good evening. Mark Bryston, I'm excited for this one too, buddy. All right. So I think LG might be learning a little, right? You know, we've had some criticisms of, of LG. We've been talking about like, how does a, a major brand, you know, start competing or start building some buzz. Um, I've always been very appreciative. I have a great relationship with LGPR, but this one was a little different. This one is a little different. Um, here, let me just, uh, I'm, I'm going to be switching back and forth. So this is going to be very clumsy transitions. I'm not as polished as my buddy TK, but this is what LG sent over. This, this, is a, this is the velvet box. And this is not like most of the review kit that we get from, from LG. Uh, when, when you're a tech reviewer like me, you expect something like this uh, coming by way of, of OnePlus. Not necessarily something, uh, I don't know, did I just break my camera? Okay, uh, you expect something like this coming by way of OnePlus. They send a very lush review kit. They've actually started selling those for consumers. I, I'm, I'm excited. You know, I, I don't do a lot of unboxings because usually we get like this cardboard brown box and then inside, it might be a retail package. It might just be another brown box. And that's what we have to go with. Um, but, but they even sent like a booklet. Again, if, if they're going to crib um, reviewers, uh, re the reviewer experience from anyone, I'm really excited to see this OnePlus style approach. So, so this is the review booklet that they sent with the velvet. And it's very pretty. And it's, it's talking about a change of pace the LG, what's in a name? LG Velvet, starting with the with LG Velvet. LG Mobile is moving away from the G and V series. G and V series. Hmm, very interesting. So uh, why the Velvet? El Velvet embodies our philosophy of practical innovation where every aspect of design is centered on the wants and needs of the consumers. So now I'm very anxious to see like, you know, we, we, there's so much we already know about this phone. It's already been making it out into to different markets. Um, I'm, I'm kind of curious, like for reviewer stuff, I, I wonder what color they sent because there are going to be these different color options. But then with the box this big, I'm wondering what else is going to be in the box. What's in the box? A Dominic Lam, uh, Lamberti. This is a great comment. <laughs> Huawei could learn a, two, a thing or two from this. All we get is hotels and unlimited use of the credit card at the bar. <laughs> uh, I remember some of those Huawei excursions that we used to uh, take while I was at Pocket Now. Um, Huawei did not cheap out, but the reviewer kits were usually pretty lean. Um, yeah, a DTNL and the V series. I'm curious to see what they're bringing as a V series replacement. Again, uh, LG in a, in a very kind of a pivot. It, it's it's interesting. It's interesting watching a company transition. 
you know, uh, retiring the G series means that they've got to do something else. So uh, that, that's this. I'm not going to make you read through. This is for me. The, the booklet is for me. I'm not going to make you read through all this. I really feel like we should probably jump in and see what's going on here. What's in the box? I, I think someone already does that as their as their like tagline for unboxings. I probably shouldn't be doing that. I'm probably ripping off another channel by making that joke from seven. And this, this mic cable keeps getting caught on a certain part of my biology and then yanking the cable under my t-shirt. So you might see a wardrobe malfunction on this live stream too. All right, let's switch over because <laughs> you don't want to see that. Let's show you the phone instead of my t-shirt shenanigans. And uh, I got to get this out of the plastic wrapper. I tried cleaning off my desk, but it's still super, super busy. So Oliver, Oliver saying no quad DAC is sad. Um, I'll, I'll be curious. I, I don't know that lacking a quad DAC right now is necessarily going to be a, an outright deal breaker. Um, my experiences with the V60 were actually pretty positive uh, considering the, the different DAC qualities from the hi-fi mode. So we've got this really nice soft touch box. This is really, really, I mean, it's it's nice and weighty. It's got, I, I don't know how unboxing videos work. So I'm kind of just winging this. I'm kind of just doing this on the fly. I'm not even sure if the autofocus on my camera is gonna, is gonna work well, but we're gonna open this lid. Ooh, velvet, I like this. And it's got kind of a velvety feel, a velveteen rabbit, something like that going on. And, Right up on top, we've got, I guess this is the phone. So this is this is the the LG Velvet box. Um, so do not accept if seal is broken. I mean, that's just good life advice uh, in general. You, you, that's how you should kind of live your life anyway. Uh, I can break this seal now. And I am so stoked. I did not get white or black. Oh, oh, I'm so happy. They sent me a color. All right, hold on real quick. I know they've got that like E I M E E I sticker. I'm going to try and get this off. I think I just turned it on. <laughs> yeah, it's booting up right now. I'm going to peel this off so that we don't have this in the way either. Always mars the appearance. And now let's come in a little closer. You can use it to reflect. And that's really pretty. Very pretty jewel tone. This water drop camera array. Again, I feel like we, we kind of knew. You, I can use it to reflect my studio lights, which aren't really studio lights. They're just cheap dorm room lights. But yeah, this, we're going with the teal. Um, I don't speak South Korean, so I need to try and remember how to switch to English. So I, I can I can set up the phone. And uh, it, it's it's really, it, it's really skinny. That that immediate in the hand it feels really nice in the hand. I'm really glad that LG isn't making their phones out of uh, broken shards of, uh, of rusted rebar, you know, so it doesn't slice your palm open when you hold the phone. It, it seems like LG engineers understood that, that an evolved primate with an opposable thumb would be holding this phone. And it feels really nice in the hand. Um, and that's your full review. <laughs> the corner's coming down here. Oh, let me let me see. Is this a, like one of those little protection bumpers? I want to peel. I want to peel parts. Come on. Give me the thing. I'm going to make the noise. Let me peel off plastic. Yeah, that felt good. Um, the, the corner coming down here is actually kind of sharp. Like you, you can, you can feel that hard transition. Uh, I don't know how close my autofocus is. You can feel like that hard transition right there. It gives it a very definite edge, even though the whole rest of the phone is trying to go for that. You know, it reminds me a lot. It's not quite as flat. Oh, I wonder if I have it out. It reminds me a lot of like a, an old curved screen galaxy. Like here's my S6 edge plus and it, it it definitely has sort of i think um some dna <laughs> of like an old samsung 
where th this feels so shockingly skinny, even though we know that's not the full like thickness of the phone. So I I'm going to set this aside for just a second. I'm not going to go through the full uh, startup just yet because I want to see what else. Let me get rid of this other Samsung case. This is an LG phone, not a Samsung. Uh, and uh, real quick, I'm just going to kind of put that right there um, in the box. It's oh, this does have earbuds. Okay, so this is the South Korean model. I, I wonder if the United States model is going to have um, earbuds too. Because the V60 did not have earbuds, but this, yep, this is coming with those little bullets. These LG bullets don't suck. Um, so, so that's not bad. Autofocus, no. There we go. So yeah, so if, if you're getting the Velvet in South Korea, you will get some earbuds at least to immediately be able to listen to some audio. <laughs> I, I love this comment from Dirk. Can it lay flat on a table? If your table is not perfectly level, something tells me this is going to slide right off your table. So I'm not going to try any stationary table drop test. <laughs> but yeah, this is this is gonna be South Korean. I, I've got the 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 two prong charger. That's not the United States charger. Um, but the rest of the box is is pretty lean. So headphones, uh, papers, a SIM ejection tool. All right. But now we've got a shelf, and I want to see. Let me scooch the box back just a little bit, and I want to see what's in here. Eleven of fifteen. Holy cow. Th this is like a special plaque of reviewer units. Only 15 of these went out. Oh man. I'm like, I'm like special. <laughs> I can't get a YouTube play button, but LG's over here sending me a little wall plaque for my velvet. <laughs> Premium, smooth, luxurious, and sleek. I'm, I'm going to put this up. I'm going to put this up on the bookshelf. <laughs> it's like LG likes me, even though YouTube doesn't. <laughs> and in the box, they're 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 bringing a stylus. Um, well, I think my ISO is set a little high. I'm gonna try and let's see if I can turn this down. That's a little better. Eh, right about there. That might be a little dark, but now you can at least see stuff. All right, so I've got a, the stylus, so we can go right into using the pen touch. Um, I already have one, so I'm not gonna break this open just yet. Here's our dual screen. So the, the case that actually gives us a second screen, I'm going to put that right next to the velvet. Let me turn the velvet over so you can see that really fancy green. That's really nice. Um, and some other case options. Yeah, I mean, if, if they're really looking to improve that reviewer and out-of-the-box experience, um, this is kind of a big deal. Like, this is a total one, one plus kind of move. I dig this so much. I, I would love... For LG to make this a real limited edition for consumers to pick up. But yeah, like uh, Paco, I mean, th that's exactly the feeling. I, I just lost the live chat, but LG, yeah, right there. LG giving forethought in marketing. This is newsworthy. So, and let me break out these cases real quick because these seem kind of nice. From Design Skin, got some fancy materials. So design skin, nice plastic, uh, kind of a rigid bumper shell. But then on the back, look at that. It's a credit card case and a hand strap. So my wife is thinking about replacing her G7 this year. And if she had something like this, I think Velvet might be a good fit for her. I really want to get her into a 5G phone just because we have zero LTE reception in our neighborhood. But funnily enough, a 5G tower went up and we can use the 5Gs better than we can use the LTEs. So let's put that in there. All right, ready? Let's do a non-drop test. <gasps> Yay, it totally works. <laughs> I don't know that this is leather. This might be vegan leather. It doesn't feel like real leather. Um, design skin, we will do our best to satisfy and delivering value to customers. But, but the rest of this is, is in Korean, and I don't speak Korean. So I, I don't know what, what that says. All right, but we do have another case here. Oh, let me put this up. We'll, we'll 
kind of prop that. It doesn't really prop up. Eh, let's get rid of the box. And this other case looks like it's a basic um, credit card case. It doesn't look like it's got anything too fancy on it, but it's just kind of a nice bumper. Got like a, I think, again, I don't think this is real like reptile skin. It doesn't look like it, doesn't feel like it, but it feels nice. It feels really nice in the hand. Like it's got texture, you know, so you can like hold it and it doesn't like cut into your hand. Ah, uh, Dominic, thanks for dropping by, man. I'll chat with you later. All right. Zachary Webb. So Timo only has 5G antennas on that tower or just the 5G reaches you. Um, I don't know. I, I think I'm just closer to the 5G tower they put up than their LTE towers. And so in, in the gadget lab, I get no LTE coverage, but I get some decent 5Gs. That looks pretty sharp. I like that. Design skin. It's got like a little lanyard strap. Got, got ports. You know, how, how nice is it? I, I'm, I'm doing this sideways, so I'm not really good at lining up my camera shots. No speaker port, USB-C, and a headphone jack. Even if it's not a quad DAC, if it's just a good headphone jack, I'm going to be okay with that. <laughs> for the comedic value of the feels good in the hands oh thanks for supporting the stream i appreciate the the super chat as saying matt tyler hashtag some lg shill guy in full force today 11 of 15 on the wall um thank you guys so much for for kicking over some super chat supporting production on this channel um i really appreciate it but i think we also got to check out uh, let me get this. I'm gonna put the. Oh, I, let me close this drawer so I don't do anything really dumb and like drop all this stuff on on the floor. Uh, let's move this out of the way. Let's kick this open. Same. It's got like a little label on it. We've got the. Come on. Okay, I'm tearing the box. I'm bad at unboxings. I should have prepared with like a pocket knife or something. But it's it's not like it's not like I'm gonna be you know, sending this back if I bought it. So, all right, a nice white case for the dual screen. I got to see some of those previews. It, it's got the surfboard feel. I, I'm I'm kind of curious. This is something I want to follow up on long term. My experience with white and plastic for lifestyle gadgets hasn't been the best. Um, where it discolors or, you know, I'm eating Cheetos, stuff like that. Um, I, I'm really curious to see how this is going to age. But immediately, just, you know, that that immediate kind of first impression, the, uh, the hinges feel pretty good. They actually feel a little stiffer than, um, than the V60 dual screen. That's nice because the V60 dual screen is, is good. Um, but it's so much surface area. It's so broad that it feels like this doesn't feel as floppy. Okay, I like that. Here's another thing that's that's going to be appreciated. Um, do I have... Okay. So here is my mag magnetic charge adapter from the V60. Here's the one that just came with the Velvet. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Magnets apparently stick to each other. Uh, how do they work? Nobody knows. Um, if I pop that in there, it snaps on. This is the V60 adapter. I'm hoping that these are compatible. I really want LG to be turning this into a system as opposed to every phone has its own kind of proprietary uh, adapters and solutions and stuff. So this is going to be a major, a major part of this. If LG is going to keep doing dual screen and making this like part of their lineup, um, I, I really want to make sure because because I bought an extra one of these. So I've got one of these by my bedside table. And I've got one here that I just keep in the office or I, I use it when I'm, I'm driving and I'm trying to charge the, the V60 in my car. If these keep, uh, if these are interchangeable, that, that helps a lot for managing a family of gadgets, especially if we're gonna be getting Marie one of these. And then also, this is, this is kind of a big deal. I really don't know where my V60 went. Oh, here it is. So here's one of the biggest issues with the V60, that the full outside covering here is glass. So the case actually does a pretty good job of protecting your phone, but if this takes even just a minor bump, corner drop, you know, you, you, you trip outside and it lands in the grass, 
you're probably going to crack. You're probably going to shatter the front case on the V60. I'm going to be, I'm really happy to see that this just being plastic should make the outside a bit more durable. Um, but let's go ahead and get it put in. And let's see what this looks like. I don't think I'm going to be able to do anything with it until I start setting it up. But just to kind of see. So, so what you end up with is, is a white phone with like a little color accent running right there. Um, you can see just a little bit of the, the color accent peeking through. Let me try and catch the light. And then you've got you know, a, a nice like washboard if you want to do some, some hillbilly you know, moonshine music. I could do a whole stream just doing this. Woo! Yeah. Zachary Webb, that all glass design on the V60 probably wasn't a great idea. But this is feeling, this is looking pretty good. I think this is looking really sharp. And it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't have the same kind of wobble. The V60s, oh, let me get the V60 again. The V60, it's like there's just that little bit of, of give. I, I can't really show this sideways very easily. My camera autofocus isn't going to pick up on it. But like when, when you kind of give it just that little bit of movement or pressure, you can feel there's just that touch of a wiggle. It seems like this is yet again another little minor refinement from where we started with the V50 last year. So that's that's making me that's making me happy. Like we're seeing progress on every single generation of of LG dual screen case. I did not pull off. Oh, and let me pop this out of the case. This is the first test of getting it out of the case. <laughs> Hold on, I'm actually having to use like muscles. <laughs> ah, it snapped off. Okay, uh, let me just get it properly all the way out. Okay. Let's let's pull this off. These these protective surface coverings are are pretty intense. They're like they're like doing gymnastics while camping. They're flipping intense. <laughs> All right, that's better. So yeah, um, so far, I like I like this look. It does feel a little bit smaller. This is like in one plus territory. It feels a little bit smaller. It's not as chunky boy as the V60. Let me move that right there. I mean, we're, we're talking millimeters difference here, fractions of, of you know, an inch. But all in all, it's, this is shaping up to be a, a bit more reasonable pocket computer experience. I still have the hardest time kind of expressing to people for as much as I love the V60, you just aren't prepared for how big this thing is until you really get to hold one. This is feeling like it's going to be a bit more manageable of a version of a dual screen multitasker. So uh, let me uh, let me flip cameras here real quick. We can we can chat through some of these questions. I just noticed we got a couple more super chats. I'm kind of giving myself scoliosis here because I'm not good at reading the chat and playing to a camera and doing it all at the same time. Doing it live. Doing it live. LFA with the super chat, extremely glad. Uh, Juan sent one of these to LG. This is the perspective I want to hear. I'm, I, I mean, I'm, I'm super stoked. I didn't realize that this, this velvet experience was gonna be so, so fancy and so limited edition. Um, I'm, I'm really stoked about that. Um, and then from Chris Welch. A promising phone that can't consistently sort apps alphabetically. <laughs> Chris, it's absolutely one of my um, least favorite aspects of LG's launcher. And why, I mean, it's that one reason alone why I end up going back to Nova. Um, <laughs> um, at Pika 2, is, is that Panasonic autofocus? It is. It is Panasonic at autofocus. I love my Panasonic cameras, but I usually shoot full manual focus. Um, from from Amit, I like it. I haven't been this interested in an LG since the V20. I like the other ones, and the V60 is nice. But my mom and I are here for this velvet. I think. I mean, I, again, I'm I'm really early into handling this. I think this might be. I, I I'm I'm thinking this might be my um 
my solution for Marie. Uh, as her as she's slowly destroying her G7, um, I think this is what we're gonna. I think this is what we're gonna try. So I'm gonna start trying to get a few things in here. And uh, okay, I've got it on the Wi-Fi. Apparently, the LG Velvet is Wi-Fi compatible. You heard it here first, folks. That's a scoop. You can take that to the bank. Don't don't try. That. They're, they're not going to be impressed with a YouTuber telling you about the Wi-Fi compatibility on, on an LG phone. <laughs> um, so, so, Ben, this is exactly like, I think we're in for very quick and minor iterations from phone to phone to phone to phone. Um, the G8X case is so much better than the V50 case. Like, night and day, substantially more usable. But exactly that, we still have this issue with the V60 where this this is not this is not firm on the G8X or or the V60 and here it it like you you it needs a little extra pressure to kind of push through and and make the the angle adjustment for however you want to prop up the second screen uh, i i feel like you know next Next year, when we're looking at new LGs, maybe we'll get another little refinement. Or what What I would really like, actually, and I know this would be kind of an increased cost, and I don't know how le uh, likely LG would be to do this, but maybe giving us a little porthole screen, kind of Sam's Galaxy Fold style, where we could interact with a bit more from the with the case closed. You know, uh, stuff like that could be kind of handy. Or, you know, you, you open this up, and then you go to take a photo of yourself and you can use the nice cameras because there's like a little display here, uh, Z flip style. Stuff like that I think could be really, really cool. Um, ooh, sorry, I just missed a, a bunch of chats. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm like way behind. Let, let, let's go through. I mean, if you've, if you've got questions, as I'm setting this up, we can also chat out and see what's going on with, uh, with performance. Uh, Technically, there's like a review embargo, so I can't like run a Geekbench and just show it to you on camera. Um, I need to check my email because I'm not sure exactly when that lifts. Uh, but we, we can talk about some other things too. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, from Blue Malicious. Juan opening something he's excited about is where it's at. It's like Christmas. It's like Christmas. <laughs> uh, yeah, for Rid for Rid. I'm going to get this phone be smooth with ladies, smooth like velvet. I have to imagine that's, that's what you sound like when you say stuff like that. It's real smooth. <laughs> um, this is interesting. The white bezel between the screens can be beneficial. I'll be curious to see if this is more or less of an interruption. You know what I mean? Like black bezels with an OLED kind of helps give the illusion of smaller bezels. I'm going to be curious if I'm trying to do something on this phone and maybe I want to go wide view and, and I want to use both both displays. I don't use wide view that much for all the people that are out there with like, you know, galaxy folds and needing tablet surface area. That hasn't been the killer app for me uh, using uh, using the V60 or the V50 or the G8X. So I wonder, like, if this separation is going to be more distracting or if, when I'm just multitasking, it's not going to matter because I'm really sticking mostly to having two separate, uh, two separate apps running at the same time. Yeah, it does, Gary Burrows. It looks like a stormtrooper phone. Like it, it, you know, if you're first order, then this is probably what you're rocking. You know, I, I I guess like if you're old school Star Wars, it would have like knobs and dials and like a crank because <laughs> it's 1970s technology. Um, Let's see. No, I don't. From Carlo, do you have the Mark II with you? I, I so the Mark II went back to Sony. I wanted to like I hold them up side by side. Ooh, let's check them out. Unfortunately, uh, Sony Sony needed that back. I, it was only ever going to be a short term loaner, but I'm I'm really looking forward to doing some longer term follow up on that Sony, especially against some of these other options that we're going to be getting in the second half of the year um from oliver this is again it's a great i think this is a great improvement over the v60 i love that lg listens to us about the glossy front and now it's gone it's going to be less fingerprinty it's going to be more durable 
I, this is a nice adaptation. This is exactly the direction I think LG should be heading um, with these types of iterations from phone to phone. Mm -hmm. Brian asks, looking forward to the review. Can't wait to see those cameras in action. I've been very impressed with V60. I think the thing I'm going to be a little concerned about with LG this year is the microphone quality. Um, the really exciting adaptations for things like uh, the voice bokeh mode and 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 the like the the ASMR super detail mode, those things are cool. But there's also a fair amount of noise reduction that hits general audio recording. And so I actually sent samples and some comparisons up to uh, an LG engineer, uh, giving them some feedback on that. And I'll be curious to see how Velvet performs for that. I think the cameras are going to be baller. I mean, even when I was messing with the Stylo 6, LG's camera game has consistently been top tier. So I, I, I have very high expectations for Velvet. Also, I'll be curious to see, um, or I guess I should say I'll be curious to hear how things like audio recording are handled. Um, this is going to be a more consumer-oriented phone. So while I expect that there's still going to be like manual modes and stuff, I have more expectation that they're going to do G series. You know, like the LG G8 had a fair amount of audio noise reduction to try and help minimize that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> from deep bench why is the cover or the back not made of velvet it makes no sense <laughs> you just gave me my my long-term follow-up on the velvet is going to be making a velvet cover <laughs> velvet i may or may not remember to credit you but i'm stealing that idea because it's hilarious um from felstone nick a normal headphone jack can't drive high impedance headphones it needs the quad dac okay I'm going to push back against that idea just a little bit. If LG is really dividing a more professional grade experience with the V series and whatever they're going to replace the V series with, and then the G series a more is a more consumer oriented uh, phone line, I feel okay with them fully licensing all of the improvements and having good hardware for the Qualcomm DAC. Uh, you can eke out a surprisingly high quality audio signal from that Qualcomm DAC if you're putting in good hardware. I have to test it. I mean, I literally just pulled it out of the box, so I have no idea if the Velvet's going to live up to that. But even using a, a V60 with Hi-Fi mode disabled, you have significantly higher audio quality than any other phone I've been testing with a built-in headphone jack. You know, it's better than the TCL. It's better than the Xperia 1 Mark II. And, and that's before you hit Hi-Fi. And when you hit Hi-Fi, it gets better. And then when you hit high impedance mode, it gets louder. So I feel like Velvet can exist as a good audio option. And then V-Series exists as premium tier audiophile option. I think it's okay. I think that's going to be okay. It's just a bummer because we got so used to LG putting, you know, super high impedance amps and quad DACs on everything. It was always, it started as a V series thing. It got adopted by the G series, but I don't think the G series is going to suffer a, a poor consumer experience if people are listening on nice, you know, multi driver earbuds. You know, get your family and friends some KZ multi drivers and have them plug into just the regular DAC on an LG. And that's still going to sound better than any other phone that they can pick up. From, from Davies, uh, is, the L, is the Velvet a flagship? I think our, our current terminology needs an adjustment in the era of 5G. I've been trying not to just lean on the word flagship to mean only one type of premium experience. Um, I, I, it's, it's annoying, but we've been playing the adjective game. Is this a mid-ranger? Is this a premium mid-ranger? Is this entry level? Is this a, a flagship? Is this a premium flagship? I think what LG is going for here is a premium consumer experience. 
that this won't be the top of the line heavy lifting pocket computer, but someone who is you know, aggressively using social media, doing a ton of multitasking, opening documents, a lot of messaging, that hardcore, you know, multi-use, the thing that makes dual screen so interesting, they're not going to be hurting for a Snapdragon 845 uh, tier of power, and, and they're probably not hitting their GPU super, super hard. And so you can arrive at a high quality multitasking pen computer experience and not be a top of the line workstation grade computing device. I'm, I'm saying a lot of words repetitively. And so I think we're, we're, we're looking at sort of a broader stratification, sort of a broader division of tiers of phones because 5G and component pricing is getting kind of silly. So, you know, Imagine taking all the bells and whistles of a really premium car, but then instead of a V8, you put in a V6. That's what I think the Velvet is. It's all the trim, it's all of the options. Headphone jack should have some decent speakers. When I booted it up, I thought, I thought it sounded pretty good. All the cameras, a nice screen, two screens, expandable storage, IP rating, all of those things combined. And then you just swap out the more powerful engine for a good daily driver engine kind of makes sense in my brain so we'll see again it's just like how many phones out there are going to give you competition for a galaxy note and not cost more <laughs> from joseph lamb i'm really interested i mean like in that booklet i i wasn't expecting them to just like say that oh by the way the v series too i have to wait to see what lg replaces the v series with i was planning on picking up two lg v60 today i mean if you were shopping a new phone and you can get a good deal on a v60 i i, I still think the v60 is doing fine um it, it's it's a brutally powerful phone um And so Gorin, Gorin and I have had numerous conversations about things like curved screens. One thing is for sure, change in design brought more noise for LG than any try before. I'm amazed how many people reacted. Uh, wow. I understand LG for delivering Velvet. It's just, I do not care for it. Um, they need to shake things up. And, and again, like dual screen is such an interesting experiment here in North America. You know, you put out a phone with a super high refresh rate display. If you go into a carrier store in North America, the LGs are going to be on a tiny little dusty table far away from the entrance. LG needs to do something else to get someone's attention. You, you, you can't get someone's attention from across the room with a more powerful processor. You can't get someone's attention from across the room with a higher refresh rate display. When I hand someone a higher refresh rate display, they don't instantly grok, oh, well, it's smoother and it's sleeker and it's more responsive. They're just like, oh, that's nice. When I hand someone dual screen, I don't need to say anything. <laughs> it's immediately apparent what's different about this phone. So LG in a North American carrier, if this is the display and it's propped up and you can see animations happening on both displays, a consumer might see that from across the room where they wouldn't have seen just like a single screen phone. Like if you go to a carrier store and, and an LG is set up like this, shame on them. <laughs> shame on that carrier store. You're, you're not seeing what actually makes this different. Um, you're not seeing what your options are in, in the phone space. Oh, well connected. I've been a fan of I've a fan since you came to Pocket now. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm gonna blush. Um, let me get this here. Uh, Blue Malicious, I feel like the LG G8X in hindsight was the halfway house between the G8 and the Velvet. I, I would totally agree with that. Again, again, it was just like a little refinement to the V50, a little refinement to the G8X, a little refinement to the, to the V60. We're seeing LG actually move pretty quickly. Um, I missed another comment in here. There was something else I wanted to see. 
from Eric Schumacher. I can imagine LG doing the same exact thing to the V series that they did to the G series. So what I'm hoping, because apparently, according to LG, they're going to be getting rid of the V moniker next. But what I'm hoping is we have a, a big heavy duty diesel truck tier of LG. And then we've got a nicer, sleeker, fancier looking consumer tier. Kind of like back in the day when there was a bit more separation between the Huawei P series and the Huawei Mate series. Now, the Mates were these big, ugly, chunky boys. And then the P series would come in with Pantone colors and interesting textures. That's what I'm hoping LG is doing. I think that split makes a ton of sense. This should be a lower unit volume device, a more premium tier device for a more demanding mobile user. You're a content creator. You're a hardcore gamer. Like the heavy lifting of this chipset is going to waste on most consumers who are going to pick up this phone and just use it for really casual things. If that's the division, I'm on board. I would really love to see LG kind of split this up. You can go with a, a lesser powerful processor, but don't skimp on all of the other features and trim and accessories that make a, a smartphone nice. You know, you take it down another tier, and that's why I think the TCL 10 Pro is so exciting. It's like you've got a basic Accord, but you've got the highest options package, you know, leather seats and a nice stereo and a backup camera and lane guidance and, and warning indicators. Like you made the car really, really nice. It's just got a four cylinder engine. <laughs> so you can jump from the TCL 10 Pro up to the Velvet and then you go to a V6. <laughs> from Coffee Flush. I, 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 I might have pushed back on this a little bit more. Velvet's slim profile is very impressive. Phone size is important to me. This thing with the dual screen accessory is killer. Sad that there won't be a quad DAC on this. Um, I mean, like V50 era, where you know the V50 was sort of just in a normal, you know, like, like a Galaxy S10 Plus size or form factor. Like I could maybe go a little bigger, but I prefer smaller phones. I, I really like the G8 as kind of a good one hand um, experience balanced by having a nice sized screen. The V60 can be tough. I've been reviewing so many phones and gadgets that I actually kind of have like a tennis elbow. Like I've got a stiffness in my left elbow just come from like holding phones and doing so many different tests and using them in cameras. And maybe I'll do a little reading in bed and I've got like T-Rex arms going on. Again, it's so hard to properly express how big a V60 really is when, when you got it you know, like fully accessorized and the velvet Already, the velvet's going to be a bit easier to hold here. <laughs> Let's see. From, from Last Divine, LG has top-notch photos. They need to become the video phone. I think they are. I really don't know of any Android manufacturer that legit does video better than an LG. Um, Sony would probably be my next go-to, but not for like casual YouTuber-y kind of stuff. Like if you pick up a Sony, it's because you want to make films. <laughs> if you pick up an LG, it's because you want to do vlog or news style editorial. And then basically, in my opinion, everyone else is pretty good. Um, those are, are my top two. Um, let me scroll back up here. Oh, Steve, I'm hoping for the rebirth of the LG chocolate. <laughs> So wait a minute, wait, okay, 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 okay. Do we think they're going to go materials? What, what? I want to put this out here into the live chat. We're going to retire the name LGV. What, what do we replace it with? Is LG baller enough to use like LG titanium? Like, would you call a phone something that audacious? LG diamond. You know, it's harder than glass. It's the LG diamond. What would we call it? Or do you think they're going to stick with like materials or fabrics or something like that? 
you know, uh, LG chocolate would be great. I would love that, but I don't think they're going to call a phone a chocolate. I think there'd be too many bad tech nerd jokes about, I wanted to like the, the LG chocolate, but it just totally melted on me. <laughs> because apparently YouTubers can only comment on how it feels in the hand and then the name of it. I don't get the Xperia 1, 2. What do you... <laughs> Sony can't even, like, name phones. Like, can't even. Like, what's up with this name? You try using the phone, and you're not going to care that it's called the Xperia 1 Mark II. If all you did was read the spec sheet, then, yeah, you're probably having a problem with the name. But I'm curious, like, if LG's going to turn their Pro phone from a, a, a letter designation to a name... What do we think they're going to call it? Give me some good options. I'll pass them over to LGPR. <laughs> From Laser Videos, I'm very glad LG is changing up their design language. That's how they're going to attract interest nowadays. It does seem to be the way. I mean, I would really be fine with more phone manufacturers following Apple's lead. Recycle a phone design for three generations. I really don't care. I mean, they're going to go in cases, and and when we get some, did I put, where did I put the cases? When we get some really interesting case designs, like, this is cool. Uh, you know, a hand strap um, wallet case. It's got, like, a little credit card slot on the side. Like, like this is going to be my wife's jam if we end up getting her a velvet. Um, I'm, I'm good. You know, like, that to me is is the fashion side of it. But... It does seem that consumers see, need to see some difference, a new color option, new design language, prettier reflective material. I, I, I don't know what gets people interested, but like with iPhones, I always said, stick with the S series, you know, wait until they've refined it. They've fixed all the bugs and get the phone that's going to be a little bit more powerful in the same shell after you get all those accessories. Um, uh, Goran Petrovic, I, I like, I'll ask, but I, I don't think we're going to get anything shocking here. Please ask why, ask LG why they removed the ESS stack. I'd like to hear the official explanation. I, I think we could guess um, costs, you know, like 5G component costs, especially when you're trying to hit that North American market are going to be really high. So how do you balance some appropriate compromises for people who still want good quality audio, but you know, might not have those audiophile or super high impedance desires to power, you know, bare dynamic DT770s at 250 ohms. Um, I, I mean, like, if I get any any reply that's not just that kind of PR speak, I'll let you know. But I'm pretty sure we're just going to get, you know, kind of standard boilerplate. From Philip Vaughn, LG needs much better press. Very underappreciated for such a quality product. Fear the beard. I really enjoy my weekend check-in with Juan and TK. Wash your hands. <laughs> Ooh, this could be a good one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me scroll back up. So I'm seeing seem okay. Let's get into some names. You guys have given me some uh, some some names here. Um, let me. God, the, the, the live chat on this just like bounced me completely out. I'm completely discompobulated now. Uh, remember the LG Arena? LG Arena could be pretty cool. I like that name. Um, <laughs> LG and HTC come back, come back to the house. Um, I might think LG is doing a little better these days than HTC is. Oh no, Frisco Flame. Wait, V is for Velvet. Oh no, they already used their V word. Um, <laughs> if it's it, it's not a chocolate, if it doesn't have 100,000 to one ratio display. Uh, Blue Malicious, going for the LG Steel. I like that, we could say Steel. Steel, nice single syllable. It means toughness, it's hard, like Steel. It'd be great if they call it an LG Steel and they brought back the Steel Rails that the V10 used to have. I'd love to get the steel trim back on a phone and on an Android phone again. And James Vincent, go with the LG W. <laughs> Ooh, this is good, Aditya Note. We could go with the LG Megatron since they already did the Optimus. 
I'm sure there's not going to be any licensing issues with Hasbro for a multi-year commitment on rebranding their most popular phone line. <laughs> LG Kryptonium? Maybe. I, you know, it's like our phone could could kill Superman. Is that is that what we're what we're trying to allude to? I just think it's I think it's a bit of a mouthful. Like even when I was like LG Titanium, as soon as it was it, it made sense in my brain, but as soon as I said it out with my mouth, um, too many syllables. You got to have the right emphasis on the syllables. Um, ooh, Fred, Fred, the LG Titan. Is there a current Titan? Is that the Unihertz? Is Unihertz using Titan right now? They might not be able to do that. We could just revive Optimus again. I, uh, I mean, it's a good classic throwback name. Hey, Simon says Hypno knows what's up. LG Excelsior, because that's the all-time awesomest-looking spaceship in uh in starfleet uh my all-time favorite i'm pointing up right there because that is the uss excelsior as provided um that poster was sent to me from andrew wallace um Debo nine the sapphire we could go we could go like something a little fancier like a gentleman's club we could call it the sapphire see the thing the thing about some of those material choices though if, like we say sapphire or diamond i think there would be an expectation that some part of the phone is made out of sapphire or diamond I would love, absolutely love to see sapphire coated um, gemstone glass make it back onto phones again. I, I still don't think I've been as brutal to a phone as I was at Kyocera that had a sapphire display. I, I don't watch my own videos very often. I love going back to that where I'm taking a hunk of concrete and I'm raking it over that Kyocera and the concrete is crumbling on the phone face and it's pristine when I'm done. I would love that so much. Um, oh, Frisco Flame. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate the support. B isn't for Velvet. No, it's not. <sighs> Frid Frid LG Adamantium. <laughs> See, again, like gemstones would be really, I think they'd be really cool. LG Ruby, Sapphire, Diamond. Something like that would be cool. But Pete Hall, I think, might have the right idea. Legit, just call it LG Pro. Velvet, soft, luxurious, fashionable. What's this phone? The Pro. What does it do? Pro things. It's the Pro. <laughs> it's the Pro, bro. I, I was trying to make a bra, but it, it, that doesn't work. <laughs> we've got sir brat another vote for lg steel i mean lg steel i think that could be pretty good oh fat produce andrew and we were just talking about you uh thank you for the super chat buddy i hope everyone is having a kick-ass weekend i hope you are also uh having some good uh times with family and friends and that you're gonna get some uh some some downtime uh simon says hypno camera impressions I, I still haven't even put uh, an account in yet. I mean, I could do that while we're while we're sitting here. Um, I, I can try and chat and do. We'll, we'll see if I can just get the camera up and running. Because um, was it? It's, uh, we're almost at an hour, so I, I don't want to go too much past an hour. Let me put in my private Gmail that nobody knows about, and my password, which is one, two three, four, five. It's the same password I have on my luggage. <laughs> and so, so far, I mean, like just putting stuff into the phone, it feels responsive enough. I like, I'm, I'm not going to be bothered with mid-ranger kit. I, as soon as I got my hands on a Pixel 3a, and it's running, what was that, the Snapdragon 660? Someone please correct me if I'm wrong there. I'm pretty sure it was a 660. It's fine. It's a smooth, snappy, daily driver, Toyota Corolla kind of experience. Um, I, I'm gonna really trying to rack my brain. I can only think of a couple people in my circles of family and friends who, um, who are going to feel let down by not having the top-of-the-line chipset. Like, they actually are power users enough where it kind of makes sense to try and flip a phone yearly. All right, we're gonna set up my fingerprint. Next. 
put in my pin, which is different than my password, which is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, place your finger on the sensor. This is feeling a lot like the V60. I hate in display fingerprint sensors. Come on. I hate it when it, you know it did one of those scans like just as you're lifting your thumb. Like, all right, great. And you're gonna have one blurry impression. I'm gonna have to wipe this out and do this for real, like actually paying attention to it later. And now slightly move. And let me add my left one too. I have this problem and anyone else out there, like if, if you also have con issues like this, it seems like phones with in-display fingerprint sensors only seem to get one of my thumbs well. So if I scan my left thumb and it's working really accurately for my left thumb, I can almost guarantee that my right thumb is gonna have issues and vice versa. Okay. Continue setup. Just a second. Assistant will be right with you. Uh, which I uh, put out a really killer video, a uh, feisty appearance, a Reddit user posted this amazing write-up on how to uh, customize the assistant. And uh, I made a video out of it. Uh, I would highly recommend checking that out if you wanna really get into macros and some good sort of health and safety recommendations for how you use macros. <laughs> Eric Schumacher, the LG Hyperion. <laughs> Ooh, Goran Petrovic, this is a great recommendation. Since the XG series starts with the, starts now with a V, the new V series should start with a G. Uh, mind blown. <laughs> okay, so we need good G words. Graphite. The LG Graphite. He's got Gemini, the Godzilla. See, Godzilla was the music video that Eminem showed off a, an LG phone in. Uh, some YouTubers were very concerned about whether or not Eminem was going to put hashtag ad on his music video because it had a product placement for an LG phone in there. <sniffs> Clutching my pearls. Won't someone please think of the children? My mic got caught again. Hold on. Let me move this down. I, maybe I, yeah, I need to get a bra or something. Oof. No one wants to see that. Let me just rub the microphone with my fingertips here while I'm doing a live stream. Hold on one second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this mic cable out just a bit. This is going to look janky. But again, I, I did this live stream on the fly. So bear with me. Please stand by. Better. Uh, let's see. Oof, man, I'm way behind. I got some super chats. Okay, let me, let me skip down to TK. Hey guys, TK's in the live chat. I missed this. I'm, I'm minutes behind. I'm like four minutes behind the live chat. I'm the worst live stream ever. Uh, this is from Def Tourette's. I'm an LG V40, V40 owner and I'm liking the velvet. I, I'll be interested to see. I, I, I really feel like if you're coming from a two-year-old phone, it might be okay. It might be all right to just make this kind of a lateral transition, but to get new features like dual screen if that's something you care about. At least reset and hopefully be on a slightly more timely upgrade schedule than what LG <laughs> used to deliver. Um, LG Onyx, that could be cool. I like that. That's a good name for it. Jim Huggard, <laughs> too obvious. Try 54321. That's my new password. <laughs> and Joel, JGJ, anything exciting about the 3.5 millimeter jack, hi-fi grade, I, I mean, I just got the phone. I, I'll be doing all of the speaker testing and headphone review testing. I, I will be putting it through its paces. And uh, it just took three scans on my right thumb, which means I bet you my left thumb unlocks easier. Uh, let's see. See, I, I really wish more companies were. It, it isn't just, you know, like... It, th there isn't just one solution to a fingerprint sensor. LG uh, should have had fingerprint under the screen and embedded in the power key. I'd be fine just getting rid of the in-display. Let's make the screen a little bit less complicated. A screen replacement doesn't have to, it's not as precious with all the stuff under the screen. I'm not looking forward to in under the display selfie cameras. Just give me a little scoop here on the side of the phone where I could scan a power button. The improved Xperia power button fingerprint sensor 
so much better, so much better. I, I mean, like, I'd love to get back to just dedicated hardware fingerprint sensors. Um, LG Supernova. And let me scroll back up. And TK, what? What are you doing, buddy? So TK just sent me a phone to help me cover a Xiaomi. Thank you very much, TK. I very much appreciate supporting the channel. I, that that was that was very kind of you. Thank you. I'm 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 gonna get all Twitter pated and tongue tied, and that was that was really sweet. Um, <laughs> LG Supernova. Do okay. So this is from uh, Usama. Do I think the Velvet is overpriced? I do not. Um, I don't think any of these phones have been. I Me, mean, like we've been complaining. One Plus jacked up prices. Um, galaxies are more expensive. I don't think any of these things have been overpriced. It's just that I think we need to do a better job of educating consumers as to what it is that they're buying. Right now, we're in the middle of a, of a network transition going from 4G to 5G. When I was living uh, across town, I had amazing LTE service. So 5G really wasn't a big deal. Here, I have absolutely terrible LTE signal but their recent network improvement was putting up a 5G tower. So now I've got really good 5G at home and miserable 4G. So if I, if I were on an LTE powered, an LTE only phone, I wouldn't even know. I wouldn't even know that there was this amazing network improvement because they're not going to scale back and keep iterating on LTE. Moving forward, all these carriers are going to try and push people to the more expensive network. The first year of a transition like that is going to increase costs, make this stuff more expensive, and it's going to take a while for this stuff to normalize. So, so it's not, you know, one phone to the next phone. It's not one plus seven to one plus eight. It's not LG V50. Well, actually, the V50 was a 5G phone too. It's not, you know, LG G8 to Velvet. It's what is it that you're really counting on? What are your expectations for network upgrades? And what are some of the, the features that are actual deal breakers? Like if this phone doesn't have fill in the blank, then I absolutely can't use it as my daily driver. And from there, that's where we have to balance out costs. I'm really positive on the OnePluses. I think it's a, they are phenomenal values for 5G phones. The V60 is an absolute beast of a productivity and content creation device. The Xperia 1 Mark II is going to be a really tricky phone to discuss because here in the United States, it probably won't at any point in its life cycle get true U.S. carrier 5G support. I'm making a crazy prediction there, but we haven't heard what it might be compatible with, and it might not be compatible with anything out there. So those costs, you, it's not as simple as S10 to S20. It's now I really got to look at this stuff and I also got to look at my zip code and I got to figure out what might I care about in two years on a phone if I want to hold on to that phone for any length of time. <laughs> From Simon Says Hypno, 650 euros with the dual screen LG tone free earbuds and the case for free. See, I think that's a pretty solid option, uh, you know, like for a 5G capable phone, which is going to be what, roughly Snapdragon 845, maybe 855 powerful, you know, CPU to GPU, probably some difference in there, and fully accessorized, fully accessorized. Because, I mean, again, I, I want people to really pay attention to this. Last year, Samsung put out the Note 10. The Note 10, 1080p display, no upgradable storage, $950. I, I'm really anxious to see what Samsung's going to do with the Note 20. Are we going to get a lower end Note and a real Note? Or are they going to do something different with the product lines to kind of flesh this stuff out? Are we going to get another Note Lite, which doesn't make any sense? But if you want awesome productivity features, a headphone jack, and stylus support, real true stylus support, 
I seriously doubt there's going to be a note under $950. So if you don't need the massive graphics capabilities or the super heavy lifting CPU capabilities of the 865, 650 euro for two screens and stylus support makes a lot of sense in my head. This phone really can't be judged against, I mean, it can, anyone's going to do it, but I don't think it can really be judged against sort of your, your average mid-ranger, unless you're really looking at some of these pieces back and forth, you know, like phones that have headphone jacks, phones that have good stylus support, phones that have, you know, that have, have had consistently good camera features. Uh, let's scroll down through here. Sorry, I, I mean, I, I get kind of on, on one question and then the live chat just whoosh, moves on without me. I'm still waiting for the, the assistant to finish up here, which I keep turning the screen off, which I probably shouldn't. Because I also want to get, where is my current stylus? <gasps> stylus pen says, welcome. It just makes me so happy. I loved the note for being the everything in the kitchen sink you know, reminding me back of like my Windows mobile days, having a stick um, experience. I, I, I love having this on an LG above the price tier of a stylo. <laughs> Swift text done. I'm still waiting for the assistant. Continue the setup. Assistant's ready to go. Um... Yeah, I guess the LG Health app can be installed. Just adding some finishing touches. It's, it's doing its thing. And I agree to all of the LG legal documents. More done. And accept. I'm signing my life away here, folks, and I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it for you. That this is the Korean version of this. I'll be curious to see if I can kind of get it working, at least for LTE. On, on, on another carrier. Oh, and I, this always cracks me up. Again, people are gonna like, oh gosh, LG doesn't even know. It is kind of funny though, that you get the don't remove the battery warning. <laughs> it, uh, hold on. If your phone stops responding or is stuck on a screen, press and hold the power and volume key for eight seconds to restart the phone. For your own protection, do not remove the battery from the phone. Removing the battery or cover can lead to safety hazards. Awesome. Thanks, LG. <laughs> it does kind of crack me up. All right. Same gestures. You know, again, you, you do your, your double tap. Double tap. Come on. I'm trying to do this live. Nah, you're going to... Oh, it's updating. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I just got the notification. Oh, we're updating a bunch of stuff on your phone. Stop poking me. <laughs> I'm getting very anxious about using this phone. All right, let me let me pull up the camera. We had a question on on camera stuff. And uh, front and rear cameras change the camera orientation for the preview done. Uh, turn on location later. Excuse me. All right, we've got time-lapse, video, photo, portrait, sticker, more. I, you know what? I can, I, can, I can switch back to the other camera here for just a bit. Let, let's do this. I'm all sweaty and stuff. This is gross. Let me scooch. Ah, I need to get a better setup. TK, I need your setup for when I'm doing these types of, of live streams. And the camera just got updated. Yeah, it, it's completing its setup. Let, let me see if I can get back in. There we go. Nope, it's doing stuff. I'm not going to be able to do this. But uh, we can learn more about the stylus pen. We've got the Korean keyboard layout so far. I need to go in and change up this, this app drawer. It does look like we're still getting like booking.com. I, I, it's so annoying when that kind of stuff is, is pre-installed on a phone. Let me see what the essentials are. The great music app still on board, HD audio recorder. That's kind of cool. So, I mean, we, we are probably still playing around with some of the, uh, the more advanced microphone, multi-microphone setup. Um, dual screen apps. I have no idea what that is. I have no idea what that is. I still haven't really figured out what Whale for LG does 
but it looks like we've got Asphalt, Modern Combat, DH5, Tides of War, which looks like Pirates of the Caribbean, and Sniper Fury. I don't really play any of those games. And then the Google Apps. It's pretty clean. I mean, again, we're talking about the Korean model here. But all in all, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty fresh-looking phone. And I, I just want to get back into the camera. Will you let me stay in the camera? So smooth, smooth action. This, this was a, a really huge upgrade going from the G8 V50 days to the V60, where you can just kind of fling and you can get into all of your other options, panorama, manual camera. Let's see if we still have, yep, all of our manual modes there. Let's do some manual focus. And, ooh, it's, it's a little twitchy, like it's fast. Um, like I slid just a little and it flicked me all the way over to the manual focus on the other side. But I want to see, do we have manual video? I didn't notice that. Hey, I do not see manual video. Is this order photo video? So we've got these other options. Like here's ASMR recording, voice bokeh. It really seems like this might be taking us back to the old G series. Remember the old G series always had great manual photography options, but it was the V series that had all of the crazy manual video options. But let's see, we should be able to get 4K, right? So we get 4K, do we get 4K 60? Oh, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's go back into video. Let's see what our options are. Save as HEVC, so at least we can do um, uh, uh, smaller file sizes. And we do get steady recording, so the I'm assuming the stabilization is going to be nice and smooth. Yeah, so it doesn't look like we get UHD at 60 frames per second. It looks like we top out at UHD 30. Interesting. So yeah, it does look like the 700 series, the limitations of that chipset are kind of making this the dividing line between the higher tier and the medium tier LG here. Very interesting. Very interesting. I have to make a choice. I'm probably still going to shoot UHD and not 1080p 60. Let's see, Panorama. Oh, I don't, I don't have my LG account signed into this. So um, very, very interesting early discovery on the Velvet. All right, let's kick this back. We should probably start wrapping this up. Um, this is like the, the, the longest and most involved unboxing I think I've ever done in the history of my channel doing any kind of unboxing. Um, let, me, let me just kind of catch up on the live chat here. <laughs> Ed Maudlin, LG Stonehenge. Classy. LG Evolution from Santiago Sanchez. Um, let's see. LG Spark. I like that. Life goes on. I like that. So, Mr. Practical, I, I, we, we see these kinds of criticisms on phones all the time. Why would you buy this phone when another phone is cheaper because it's older and on sale? When the Velvet is as old as the V60, what do we think is going to happen to the pricing there? Again, I mean, like, it's the same kind of it's the same kind of criticism we see, like, when someone's like, "Well, why would you buy any other phone? Samsung had the 865 first. Just because the phone was first doesn't mean any phone that comes after it is too late to be worthy of some consideration." Um, just because you can get good deals on the V60 now, I'll be shocked if Velvet doesn't launch with some kind of carrier deal in the United States. I mean, let's not forget that the G8 originally launched at like $800, but you could get it for like $600 on B&H. Not, not like trade in or BOGO or sign up for a new line of service, like literally go to B&H, buy it unlocked, and it was already on sale the day it came out. So I, I think it's a little, we do this as geeks, right? When we want a phone to win, we look at sales and trade-ins and BOGOs. And when we want a phone to lose, we look at the MSRP. <laughs> Why would you buy this phone for $1,000 when you can buy a Samsung for $600? How'd you get $600? Well, I traded in a phone and I signed up for two years of service. The other phone was $1,000. Yeah, full retail. 
Uh, let me let me catch up. I know I'm missing a super chat in here. I'm so sorry. Um, where did it go, uh, Mr. Cormer with the sticker? Uh, unfortunately, I'm in Streamyard, so I'm I'm not showing off your super sticker. But thank you. I appreciate the support. Um, <laughs> let, let me let me just kind of catch up. I'm almost to the end of the uh, the live chat here, and then we can wrap this up. Um, Simon says hypno. I tried whale once and was nonplussed. I don't get it. I really, I mean, again, I think it's kind of like a browser portal web thing and I use Firefox. Um, <laughs> uh, what about the audio controls on the video? So it doesn't have the, because it doesn't have manual video, it doesn't have the manual inputs, but it does have the voice bokeh and ASMR modes, which are actually pretty good. Um, I, I was very surprised on the V60. There's a part in my V60 camera deep dive where I make a prediction about the the voice bokeh mode, and then I go and try it in a on a busy street, and I was completely wrong with my original prediction. Um, what was I going to look at? Oh, I want to pull up the HD audio recorder. Because it should have, if it's if it's like the other microphone modeling, I agree to your terms of service, allow, next. Yeah, it's got all of the same options for studio mode and stereo recording. So let me, I don't want auto gain. Let's do custom, yes. So this makes me happy. If you want to record 24-bit wave or FLAC files with full manual audio controls, all of this is here. Um, it's just, uh, it doesn't look like they're gonna be including the manual video controls that give you this kind of audio. Oh, I just lost my mic clip. Uh, we're gonna do something here real quick. Mm. Sorry for the rustling. Russell, Russell. No, that looks terrible. Hold on. Uh, this is the best live streaming ever. And I lost the clip again. All right, I'm going to drop this through my shirt. You're going to hear a lot of noise. Oh, actually, let me mute my mic for just a second. <laughs> I told you, I told you we'd get a, a wardrobe malfunction at some point. I apologize. This might rustle just a bit. Um, no, so Adam L, no 8K 26 frame per second HDR 10 plus in stabilization video. Not on a Snap Snapdragon 700. <laughs> uh, LG Spark. Ooh, Fat Produce. What about the LG Frisbee? That could be kind of fun. It's almost kind of like, you know, LG UFO or something like that. Got the LG Setsy. I like that. Ooh, and Fat Produce with another super chat. Hold on, the live chat just bounced me off. Surprise, off topic question. Should I get a Pebble Time with Rebel OS or an Amaze Blip, Amaze Blip S for slightly less money? I'd say go with the Rebel. I love my old Pebbles. Gotta, gotta do, gotta do a, a Pebble. <laughs> Did you want? <laughs> Stop playing with yourself, all right? <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. All right. Uh, and and I think uh, Alosa is, is, is right on the money here. I gotta go. Great stream one. Uh, bye bye and have fun. All right, folks. I, I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm I I am shocked. I'm I am crazy surprised. Um, uh, LG. I, I did not expect to be on this list. This right here, uh, eleven of fifteen. Only fifteen of these kits went out there. If anyone from LG PR is listening, I'm going to make the impassioned plea. This experience is so nice. Being able to open a nicer package, fully accessorized, you know, the, the beautiful construction on this box where this will probably stay in my office for a while, for almost the life of this phone, where you immediately get to experience what makes the phone unique. Earbuds came in the box. It came with a stylus. You can go right into note style use. Not only the dual screen case, but having another option for, 
for a more fashionable case, if you just want a solo phone, you know, you don't want to go dual screen. This type of experience is, is so much nicer than the normal consumer. I ordered a phone presale, a big brown box got dropped off, and there's bubble wrap in here, and there's a phone in a case. Please, someone at LG, consider making this a limited edition experience for consumers. For any phone that you come out there, that, that you release, that you, that you put out there, consider making this something that someone could buy. You know, still charge full retail, you know, what, what it would cost to get the case and a stylus and, and all these other accessories, but put it together like this. And even if you only make 100 of these, you'd have regular people out there really feeling good about doing business with LG. I think OnePlus did a very similar thing with the OnePlus 8, where it was a, a super limited, like, pop-up store style gift bag. You know, and it came with all of the things that reviewers usually get, but just in a nicer presentation. Would absolutely love to see someone, like someone in my family, buy a fully accessorized product ready to go. And then be able to share this kind of an experience. So that, that would be my plea. If we're going to do unboxings and we're going to check this stuff out, I hope moving forward, this is that LG can, can, can expand on this idea, craft this kind of an experience for other people. So um, let's, let's uh, kick this back, wrap it up. <laughs> Marilyn, you're the LG man. I'm, apparently I'm one of 15 LG people, <laughs> only 15 LG people. Um, uh, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Those of you who kicked over some super chats and super stickers, thank you so much for supporting production on this channel. I'm going to have a lot to say about Velvet. Um, it's going to get mixed right back into my workflow. Uh, I, I, I'm, I've got some... I've got some designs on trying to put it up against other entry-level and mid-ranger fare. Like, you know, already seeing some of the differences for camera performance, for some of the limitations of Qualcomm's chipset here. There's an interesting idea at play, like, you know, maybe someone shopping a little lower end, but picking up something like an iPhone SE, that's good competition. But if you want multitasking and, and graphics studio work capabilities and spreadsheets and stuff, well, a dual display with a stylus makes way more sense. So I'm trying to put together some interesting, um, not, not, not just comparisons. I, I, I'm not the biggest fan of making videos where I just read specs at you. Um, but other ways that we can really real world kind of push these devices to their limit. So if you have any suggestions, please drop them in the comments and you can catch me on social media. Um, but I want to have more of a conversation about using this than just, well, I took it out of the box and I ran Geekbench and it feels really nice in the hand because that's not a review. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not even an impression or an opinion <laughs> at this point. So, um, Thank you so much for watching, for sharing videos across this channel, for subscribing to this channel. Um, I, I'm going to be uh, releasing a whole bunch of stuff. There's a headphone review that's going out today. There's uh, a Sony video that's going out tomorrow. Stuff's happening on the Patreon. Uh, my buddy Adam Dowd came back for a creator chat podcast. That's going up today. Friday is exploding, and I'm glad you're along for the ride. So have a fantastic day. Have a fantastic weekend. And just like I end my podcasts, I want you to do awesome with your technology. I want you to be awesome with your technology. And I'll catch you back here on another video or podcast or live stream. I've got a lot of stuff going on. So take care, be well, and I'll catch you back.